Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a market wrap for the week ending April 19th, 2018. Uh, we're going to look at uh, what happened today and uh, what to look for next week. I think uh, I was going to put out some static charts on the site, just post a few charts of uh, the broad markets. But uh, in doing so, as I started to mark that up, we, we really, and this again, I said this quite a bit recently, but we've once again closed at a pretty significant technical juncture. I'm going to go over a few developments uh, to watch for next week. I think uh, this, this video is worth watching. I'll keep it relatively brief, but uh, uh, let's just start out here with a QQQ 30-minute chart. I'm not going to go into this too much in detail. I already did this uh, you know, la yesterday in the last few days showing you all of these uh, these sell signals on the 30-minute chart when you have uh, oversold readings or all or overbought, I'm sorry, overbought or near overbought readings in conjunction with the uh, bearish PPO crossovers on the PPO. And again, that was already covered. You can see it does a good job of, you know, not every correction was, was huge, but some were. And um, again, if you just look, and, and what I take away from this is the average of each of these moves. Today, the S&P, I'm sorry, the Qs, which is my my focus lately, because it's all been about these big fang stocks uh, and tech and, and uh, the big market leaders. Uh, so uh, that's that's what I'm looking at today. We dropped about one and a quarter percent at the lows, and as you can see up here, we closed uh, down 0.92 percent. So uh, so that sell signal certainly did play out. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, we're almost oversold, but we didn't quite hit the oversold level. The this trend indicator, the 9 EMA, the white line, the signal line is just just closed right about on the zero line, with the PPO starting to curl up. Uh, so you're not going to like this. You guys know if I have an opinion, I give it to you. If I have a preferred scenario or feel strong or even leaning one way towards the other, I give you that. And I'll, I'll give it to you in this video. But um, I can tell you this can go either way. And that's why I think the video is important. That's why I'm doing the video. So number one, uh, if, if this continues, to, you know, if we bounce next week, we will have successfully defended this trend indicator. And if you're not familiar, again, I talk about the PPO signal line, that white line, when it's above the zero line, like it was here, indicating the trend is bullish. And when it's a below, when it's below the zero line, that's the dotted line, it's bearish. Uh, it's not a be all end all, but it works pretty well. So let's see what happens. You can see the PPO starting to curl up. But uh, that doesn't mean it's crossed, and that doesn't mean it will continue. Um, but uh, so there's a pullback to the trend line. There's that gap I was targeting. If we zoom in, uh, you know, I said I was looking for a backfill of the gap. Well, we actually came in and almost hit the bottom of that candle, and I'm talking about Tuesday's gap. Um, in this trend line, if we take out this trend line uh, next week, and I want to get to the futures and show you guys some things there as well, uh, we come down here and then we'll get a backfill of that gap. So here's one. Well, one scenario, of course, is we hold trend line support and we rally next week. And I'm going to get to that on the futures chart. You know what? I'll do it here because I know a lot of you guys trade QQQ uh, in lieu of futures, but I like the futures chart because they should charts because they show around the clock trading so here's one scenario i'm going to outline it here and that would be a move up let me just draw this i'm marking divergences there's really a price channel forming here but uh this extended extension here that line i gave you so let's say we do hold support and qqq successfully defends this pullback to support it's a pretty well-defined trend line we bounce up we make another new high and that will be a divergent high you can see there and and you guys know i love these 60 minute divergent highs and low uh to set up swing trading ops so if we get a divergent high there and then reverse confirming the divergence We'll move down. Uh, you could maybe put a starter short position, and that also makes it up to the upper end of my bounce targets that I've talked about. And I'll get to my, my potential head and shoulders uh, scenario on the daily chart here in a second, which would form that right shoulder. And uh, so, you know, a somewhat aggressive trade, um, but but not too much if you control your stops. You short up here if you do get that punch to new highs around what, roughly 168, give or take, uh, or anywhere really above these highs with a stop somewhat above there to protect your losses if the market keeps going on higher. There's a big gap that might want to be backfilled here. You can see this gap. Um, but if you do that, and then we go move down, we break this trend line and start moving down impulsively, which we probably would. That's what you want to see on the formation of a right shoulder. And there's a divergence. So that is, let's just say at this point in time, my more bullish scenario. 
um, of uh, what, what may happen next week. Uh, the bear scenario, of course, is that we gap down below the support. We are on trend, trend, closed right on trend line support or just a hair above it. We hit it, tested it today. Uh, these trend indicators would flip bearish. We can get that backfill. And... Um, We'll have to take it from there. I, I, what I'd lean towards if that breaks down is probably just a backfill of Tuesday's gap, like I was talking about earlier, down to 163 or so, and then come in and back test the channel, and then maybe move on down here. That, that I have that level in blue because that was that significant uh, neckline uh, on the inverse uh, head and shoulders bottoming pattern that I talked about, uh, you know, way back here when we had this W bottom and the double head uh, on the head and shoulders pattern. So that would also be a, a you know, potential downside target. And, um, you know, my guess is we're going to gap one way or other on Monday. So we're either going to gap up and defend this channel. And as long as we hold it, then the near term outlook is bullish there. But uh, if we break that channel, especially gap below, that's where you might want to look to cover some shorts. If you went home short this weekend, um, or maybe trail stops at that point. Remember, that's always an option. You hit down. Maybe this market just keeps going lower. You know, a lot of times in a position, I'll either cover up my target or I'll set, if that target's hit, I'll set a tight trailing stop just above it or a tight stop above it. And that allows for what I call a runner trade. Uh, you know, sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. Um, the trend keeps going your way. So worst case scenario is you give a little bit of give back on your profits. Uh, so there it is. That's uh, what to watch for next week on QQQ. And we go to a daily chart. Uh, you can see there's that same uptrend line on the 60 minute chart. Let me just give you a clean board here. And uh, if you missed my previous analysis, this is that potential head and shoulders pattern that we're talking about here. Uh, let's draw it like this. Let's put our neckline like this right here. And you have your right shoulder, you have your head, and you're, you know, we're almost there. You don't have to have perfect symmetry, but the uh, more symmetrical a head and shoulders pattern is the better. And there's that gap I was talking about back there, big old gap. So if we go up there and backfill that gap, and then reverse and move down impulsively, you will have a, at least at that point, a textbook looking uh, head and shoulders topping pattern. Uh, these, you know, PPO is still below the zero line. Uh, the PPO line is testing the zero line from below right now or about to, you know, close its value of uh, negative 0.05. Um, the signal line is still well below. So there, there's that's the bigger picture. But again, let's focus right now. I'm, I'm living largely in the world of the intraday charts. That's what I'm trading off of, and that's what I'm watching. But I always keep an eye on the longer-term charts. Now let's look at the futures. And uh, the futures tell you a lot, too, because they trade virtually around the clock. You know, they shut down at 5 o'clock Eastern time on, on Friday, and then they reopen Sunday night. And other than a brief, I think it's a 15-minute period, uh, shut down each day after the close, a little bit after the market close, they square away. But uh, other than that, they trade around the clock. And uh, that's why you're not going to see as many gaps in the futures as you do on QQQ. Because QQQ, of course, whatever happens overnight in the futures, that's, you know, that translates into usually a gap up or down in QQQ. So what am I watching now? Well, Here's the scenarios that we're, we have here. Uh, you can see that I have marked negative divergence here. That's the MACD. This is the PPO. It's in a histogram form. This particular charting platform won't give you a signal line for uh, who knows why, whatever reason, but it is the PPO. So divergence, divergence, divergence across the board. And this is what I'm referring to, this divergent high right here. Uh, you can see that impulsive move down. But again, we close right on uptrend line support. And you can see how well-defined this price channel is as well. So you have a, an ascending price channel. And as I always say, support is support until and less broken. But it's interesting how they parked, where they parked the uh, indexes today. Now, what I wanted to show you is, is, are my two scenarios. When we zoom in here, let me zoom in a little bit so you can really see this. What I'm looking at now is the bounce off this trend line today. Uh, very much resembles a bear flag. Let me change the color of that line so we can uh, see it a little bit better. Uh, we'll go with this color here. So you can see here this potential bear flag pattern right there. It's, it's pretty clear to me, uh, clean looking. And a bear flag, the, if you're not familiar, just Google that term online. You'll see it, that what makes up a bear, a bear flag is a continuation pattern, meaning you have a sharp move down, and that's called the flagpole, measured there, followed by a period of consolidation, typically on, on lower volume. Uh, this is higher volume, an impulsive move down. And then to take 
to get the measurement of a bear flag, you take the distance of the flagpole. Now I'm just going to eyeball it here. I have a support level right there, about 67.11 on uh, NQ, which I think would be hit. So here's what you look for. If we gap down Monday and we gap and we just, you know, barring any little kickback rally, we continue to sell down and it's impulsive selling on Monday. Um, you're probably looking at this scenario playing out uh, because we, we closed precariously close to support. We tested it today, held it successfully, but in that flagging type action. Now, just because you have what appears to be a, a flag doesn't mean it has to play out. So scenario B, uh, you know, in the bearish scenario would be this. I'll extend these lines here a little bit like this. And it meshes with what I just showed you on uh, QQQ a minute ago. And uh, that would have, uh, if this support holds that we, we hit today, we gap up or we, we move up next week, early next week, and take out the previous highs, then reverse. What that will do, as you can see here, I have now have a little bit cleaner divergence. By cleaner, what do you mean by that, Randy? Well, the divergence I had drawn before was pretty flat, and, and those divergences sometimes do play out. Um, you can see it's pretty flat there, the divergence that I highlighted earlier. But here you would have a little more clean separation in the lines if we do get this thrust up. And so you'd have a divergent high, you know, anytime really after taking out the previous highs. And then again, if you look to see, so maybe if that starts to play out and you have some type of bearish interday, bearish reversal pattern, like a bearish engulfing candlestick or any combination of bearish candles, uh, you may start a position there on short, a short position, uh, which you can then add to. And again, going back to the daily chart, keep, whether you're a short term trader, you know, I'll actively trade. I've been day trading, you know, NQs like crazy lately, long and short. But yet, you know, there's also swing trade positions and swing trading ops. So what I'm looking at here, if we get that bounce up, um, you know, I lightened up. I, you know, I, I had gone in short, as I told you guys on the site the other day, um, shorted after covering my longs uh, off the lows here. And we had that official trade. And I covered today because we closed that trend line support. And I, I actually, I'm sorry, I covered half of my position. I took the other half home um, with some stops. I'm, you know, leaning towards this gap down scenario. I have to say that. I told you guys I would give you my, my you know, preferred scenario. Uh, and if we gap up, whatever, I'll give a little bit back on profits. But again, I reduced my position uh, because of the overnight risk, uh, especially on the weekend. And uh, so there's your bearish scenario and your, your uh, I'm sorry, bullish scenario. And your bearish scenario has us coming down here, probably a little reaction or a hiccup there around 67.11 and very possibly come back into test. That's that same neckline that I showed you on QQQ for the inverse head and shoulders pattern on the NQE minis. It's 66.52, give or take. That's the level there. You can see that blue line and you can see how well if you follow that. Look at all these reactions along here. Um, so a very solid support level. And so if we do get a pullback, if we do break down next week, early next week, um, you know, I'll remain short and I'll look to cover right here and probably reverse that to a long position if the charts confirm. Again, we might have a little hiccup there around 67.11 if that scenario plays out. And if not, then look for the bullish scenario. Okay, I could wrap it up here. And if you're all you're interested in is you know where I think the market's going, that's it. End video. Remember, when you watch these videos, also you can hit it on two time, or, or I'm sorry, go to the settings on YouTube, bottom right corner, the little settings icon, and increase the playback speed. Uh, I I think any just about any video I watch on YouTube. Um, you know, I'll increase it to 1.25 or even 1.5. Sometimes I'll even follow on 2.0, you know, two times speed. It really shortens the duration. However, if you're still with me and you want to see some additional, uh, some other reasons why I have that, you know, conflicting analysis right now, I'm going through the components of the, uh, I'll just go through a handful of the top components of QQQ. This is Apple. This is a daily chart, um, chart I've covered in the past. I covered it here leading up right before we broke down, warning of a correction in Apple when we had this divergent high, confirmed it when we had that breakdown and there was a 17% correction off the highs. What did we do? We kicked back. We back tested the trend line. That's that same trend line. I have not modified it since before we even broke down. And you can see two perfect back tests and that led to an even high, uh, a second consecutive or third divergent high. And you guys have also often heard me say uh, three strikes and you're out is my motto with uh, divergent highs. We had divergent high one right here, uh, divergent high two and divergent high three. And that started to play out.
uh, you can see that uh, at this point, well, if we made another high, it would probably still be another divergent high. But what I'm looking at here on the daily chart on, on Apple is these indicators are rolling over now. The, P, the, the RSI is pointing down. The PPO is starting to roll over on the daily time frame. Apple broke down on the 60-minute. Apple is, by the way, if you're not familiar, by far the largest component in QQQ or the NASDAQ 100, and it's also the largest component in the S&P 500. This is the 60-minute chart. This is what I've been watching. We had a gap down today. Um, down 2.83%. That's a pretty ugly breakdown. And, uh, you know, you can see divergence leading up to that high. Uh, so Apple's not looking good. Not on the 60-minute chart. I don't see anything other than the fact we're at oversold readings now. But as I always say, uh, oversold can become and often does become more oversold, especially if the primary trend is down. Now, the, the you know, the longer term trend, the longest when you look at weekly and monthly charts, you can't say, yeah, Apple's in a, a primary downtrend or a bear market yet. Um, there's still some things to happen there, but it is possible. We, you know, we're only going to know in hindsight. Apple's going to have to be down 20% or more off the highs easily before the long-term indicators start to roll over. So you can have to go off these interday charts. And I uh, just wanted to point that out. So you know, if you want a positive from me, oversold. But I don't see any reason to step in and buy Apple, at least not at this point. And probably coming down. You can see some support levels that I have marked here. So that's it. There's Apple. Let's look at Alphabet. Uh, this is GOOG, one of the two share classes, and uh, you can see I have a resistance zone right here that we, we hit today, we stopped at. Still above trend, here's a trend line. If we pull back, that would be a target. Uh, you can see here I have horizontal resistance and trend line resistance. So I favor a, you know, if we, especially if my bear snare on QQQ, if we gap down or start moving down early next week, this is where I think uh, Alphabet's going. Uh, probably have a little reaction there. And if that trend line goes, not good. Uh, if we continue higher, if the bullish scenario plays out, you can see my next uh, target up there. And there's a little gap above it to be filled. You can see right here. Um, but that's that's my outlook on Alphabet. Let's see if I have anything different on the... No, the same stock, just the Class A shares, G-O-O-G-L. Same story. Uh, we'll just go through a few more. Here's Microsoft, 60-minute chart again. Look at this uptrend line. Just like Apple had that uptrend line, we don't have negative divergence, but we are we are overbought on Microsoft. Uh, you can see this is the RSI down here. Uh, last time we were overbought was right here. You can see what happened after that. The time before we were overbought was right here. You can see what happened after that. Uh, you know, it's simple wash, rinse, repeat stuff, guys. None of this, you know, is guaranteed just because you're overbought. Here's a period where you were overbought. Um, you had a little pullback and you became overbought again, but that put in a divergent high. So, uh, you know, typically you either have one and done overbought readings before a correction, like the one, the, like these first three that I just circled, followed by the corrections, or you have a, you know, pullback and then you kick back up, have one more, uh, a lower overbought reading that puts in negative divergence. Um, now I'm leaning towards this one breaking down, but look where we're at. Apple's challenging these highs right here, 97.18, that previous high. So like I said, guys, this thing can go either way. Just respect whichever, either way it breaks out. And, uh, you know, if the markets break down, it may not be too late to jump in if you're, you're standing on the sidelines um because i gave you the downside targets it depends how much we gap down if we do uh and if we hold that support or even if we open where we were today i can tell you this going back to those charts just uh well here i'll do it real quick for you qqq 30 minute well here um uh, whatever we had a 60 minute yeah that's fine 30 or 60 minute chart they're going to look the same uh you know if we open up above trend you could certainly go long with a stop uh place just below this trend line uh, as long as we're not too far above it, that's objective. You might get stopped out, but your min your downside is minimal, less than half a percent or less than one percent. Uh, especially if that bullish scenario plays out, there's two percent upside if we hit. Uh, actually, if we go all the way to the bottom of that gap, you're talking about two, almost two and a half percent upside right there. And I'm looking at my green pop-up box to the left for the percentages. And if we completely backfill that gap, uh, there's a three and a half percent upside. So. You know, if you want to risk one percent or less to make two and a half to three and a half, uh, you know, that's a that's a, a an attractive risk reward. It might be worth it for you. And then finally, let me just see if there's anything else to cover. There's Amazon. I haven't really updated that chart much uh, on the 60-minute chart on the 60-minute time frame. That is. Um, 
other than we had a, a little trend line here that was taken out, but we have some resistance right there. And of course, it's trying to challenge its previous highs. Uh, Facebook broke down here. I had this little wedge on a 60 minute chart. I had negative divergence on it. And you can see that Facebook broke down. It's have, had a little kickback rally so far. Might come in, try to back test this wedge on uh, Monday. We'll see. Trend indicators are bullish for now. So, not one of my favorite shorts, but uh, I'm just trying to give you an idea because where these stocks go, these are the leading the top overweighted components of QQQ. Intel, big chip, you know, the king of the chips, uh, broke down. And if you zoom in quick, uh, uh, tightly, uh, you can see here, you it broke down and had an impulsive move down right there. And it seemed to, just like uh, QQQ today in the futures, flag. That looks like bear flagging action. So the bear snare plays out. And this is what it looks like for Intel next week. That So we gap down or start moving down impulsively, even if we open flat. Uh, again, look for impulsive selling, increased volume expansion out of that flag if it happens. And uh, there's you know probably plenty of downside if that plays out. All right, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, Cisco, Cisco looked good since it broke out of that that uh, downtrend line. But of course, like everything else, it's you know you can draw some uptrend lines here on the 60-minute charts. And a lot of these leading NDX stocks, Nasdaq 100 uh, stocks, especially the tech stocks, are flirting with these trend lines. They're overbought. Uh, so at the very least, I think the risk reward is not very attractive in the market right now, even with today's pullback. In other words, I see the upside, especially for a longer-term trader investor. You know, I'm looking what two maybe 3% upside. Is it possible we keep on blasting through the, the previous highs and go much higher than that? It's possible. I just don't see it in the charts right now. Uh, Comcast is about the only one. I'm going to stop here. The, about the only one I like in the uh, NASDAQ 100 right now, or the top components. I'm going down. Uh, I have a watch list. It's not in. Your, it's on a different monitor right now or below this screenshot, uh, and I'm sorting these by market cap. So this is one of the largest components in the NASDAQ 100 at support. Deeply oversold, and I just showed you the 60 minute chart. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there so you guys know what to look for next week. Uh, it should be interesting either way. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and have a great weekend, guys.